Hello, and welcome to my sanatorium. Some people call it a shop, but most people that know me know better. This is where I dream up some of the most insane projects I can come up with, with big power. I like projects with big power. One of my first projects was a 18-foot Taylor Craft, 1976 model, with a blown fuel-injected, alcohol-injected, big block Chevrolet. The name of the boat was Dragon Fever. I built it in 2005, run it for quite a few years. It was a lot of fun, but it was still a mechanical, I mean a reciprocating engine. Made lots of horsepower, lots of noise, and it was a real showstopper. And lots of pictures of it passed around. This is one of the most popular ones. It was been used on Facebook for a lot of memes. And it had an insanely long 300 foot rooster tail at about 60 or 70 foot high. And I called this my space shuttle launch. When you gag the thing with the trim all the way up, it would shoot the boat four feet out of the water on the back. And the bow's about 14 feet in the air, something like that. So that was my first project. That was back in 2005. Then in 2018, I started on the next project, or finished up the next project. And that was a 25 foot Warlock. This one's been seen quite a bit. We run it in a lot of river runs. I've run it at a shootout a couple of times in Lake of the Ozarks. Arneson surface drive. This is a Mark Wilson version off of a race boat called King of Shaves. Some of you may have heard of that one. It is T53 powered, L13B T53 turbine with a gearbox that drops it, the torque down to rotational power through the drive shaft and out the back of the boat. Everything in this had to be handmade, all made out of stainless steel, polished aluminum, stainless was polished. Fuel tanks were handmade, 115 gallons per tank. We had no idea how much fuel this thing was gonna use, so we wanted to make sure we had enough fuel and realistically, we don't need but about 80 gallons. At 100 mile an hour, I get 1.6 miles to the gallon, but you don't wanna get below that. You drop down to idle and she's burning 25 gallons an hour at about five miles per hour. So the fuel consumption sucks at idle. Of course, they're all idling somewhere around 48 to 50% just to stay running. So they're not really made to poke along. It's not real convenient for stopping and starting. But I've got over 10,000 miles on this thing on river runs and just running around playing with it and zero maintenance, zero maintenance on the engine. I've had to change oil in the drives, even the belts on the engine, they're still original belts. The brake pads that stops the gear train are all original. They hardly ever get used. They, they, once the thing is in the water and slows down by the prop, it hardly even puts any pressure on the brakes. It's been a really good boat. But we still have a lot of mechanical stuff that I worry about breaking. And of course, you break something at a 100 mile an hour or better. This boat consistently does 136 mile an hour, from 40 mile an hour to 136 mile an hour in six seconds. If you don't believe it, climb in it, ask a few people that's rode in it. It is insane course from zero mile an hour to 40 mile an hour is about eight seconds just to get there so it don't come out of the hole real fast it's not a dragster but you don't want to jump on it at 40 you better have something with some good power to keep up with it it's been a successful project and have enjoyed it but it's time to move on to the next project the next project is sitting right here this is a pair of CJ610 General Electric turbojet engines. 
2,900 pounds of thrust each at sea level. And they can burn up to 300 gallons an hour each at full blast, literally full blast. We have two fast diesel fuel systems fuel pumps. Each fuel pump has a backup electric 24 volt motor on it. So there's two motors on each pump for redundancy. Each one is on its own separate circuit. So if one motor burns up, the other motor can handle the job. We don't need both pumps at the same time. 540 gallons is plenty of fuel to run both these engines at the same time. Uh, the second fuel pump is for redundancy and another little surprise that's coming later on maybe a maybe an afterburner who knows these two engines fly a 1970s Learjet 24 Lear 24 that weighs 12,500 pounds at 614 miles per hour fuel system is all complete. We have to build some FOD screens before I fire it up. The fuel system is ready to fill up, pressurize, leak test, make sure all the control valves are working. We got to put throttle cables on it. And it's sitting on this trailer for one reason. That's to test the control systems. Everything in this setup is all custom made it's all digital so we had to convert the engines from analog to digital to NEMA 2000 all the control screens are touch screen I can change all the screens to different things all these screens are customizable you can make different screens uh, you can put anything on here you want to put on here whatever you want to look at I can look at each engine individually and anything that I look at in the cockpit I'll be able to look at here so this is this display and control box that'll go down in a compartment somewhere in the back of the boat this is the control system for it these are voltage regulators for the 24 volt alternators we used a pair of custom-made alternator drives off the engines this is all the control components in there. We have mostly Maritron products, but we have two RS-11s by Nolan Engineering. Really good people to work with. They have a really good pro product, really easy to program, works well. Maritron's a little more expensive, but it is really robust. That's the Maritron data logger, kind of like the black box in an airplane, and it's orange just like the ones in the airplanes. But this it logs everything that's going on with the engines and on the boat that we want to manage and log. This started out with just a few wires and boy did it get out of hand quick. We have our basic 12 volt fuses that operates the independent systems and then the 24 volt systems for the alternators, the igniter relays, the sense leads for the alternators. And then it has a GPS antenna on the top of it. And this will be the main display that goes in the cockpit. And we can put as many of these displays in there as we want to put in them. We don't have to use Garmin. We don't have to use anybody else's expensive displays. We can go buy a $300 touchscreen display and put it in here. And same thing with this one. You can change all your screens. You can custom make the screens for it. You can edit the screens. We have engine speed and percentage, port and starboard, EGTs, oil pressure, oil temperature, 24 volt DC system and 12 volt DC system. The voltage current, these starters, when you first hit them, Pull an astounding 640 amps for the first five seconds. 
until it gets up to about 20% and then they drop down somewhere around 490 amps. We have fuel flow for the port and starboard independently so I can tell exactly how much fuel we're burning. And all the switches are touch switches. see she's not far from being ready to fire up just a few more little items to do and she'll be ready this will be the world's fastest trailer we do plan on pushing the trailer with the engines but only to find out how much off-center thrust is going to happen if we shut one engine down we're not going to get let this thing go over idle when we're rolling out across the field with it Probably not much over about 30 miles per hour. Independent brakes, left and right brakes for steering the trailer when I need to go out and test it. We still had to put the brake lines on. We have line locks for locking the trailer down when it's hooked to the back of the truck. We'll also be able to tell how many pounds of thrust the engines are putting out. This is a regular surge brake. So the hydraulic pressure that's created when it pushes on the truck will push the pressure into a, not this gauge, but there's a sensor that'll go here that every 600 PSI of hydraulic pressure that pushes on here is equal to a thousand pounds of thrust. We've measured that with a scale, so we know 600 PSI of hydraulic pressure is 1,000 pounds of thrust. We've put the calculations into the computers, and it'll give me an instant readout on the dash, so I'll know exactly how many pounds of thrust the engines are pushing. All the engine mounts were designed by me using Fusion 360. Mopped them up, sent them up to Tony Ray at Coastal Machine. His guy, Dan, went over all my measurements and everything, corrected a few things. That's not exactly what I do for a living, but it wasn't too bad. He didn't have to correct too much. He just had some radiuses in places that you really can't put radiuses. So he cleaned all that up. The reason I'm going with turbojet engines is there's nothing mechanical from the engine back. We have no gearboxes. We have no drive couplers to fail. We have no transmissions, no drive shafts, no lower units, no props to brake. If the engines fail at high speed, it should just slow down and stop. And of course, that's another reason it's on the trailer like I explained earlier. We're gonna let it roll out across the field at idle and shut one engine down and see how much off center it pushes. So we'll have some idea of how much thrust differential will move the trailer. We got about probably four hours worth of work to do. Tie up the lines, tie them down, secure some stuff, build the FOD screens, and she'll be ready. I've made a whole lot of videos, time-lapse photography and time-lapse videos of the uh, complete build. That'll be coming. Make some more YouTube videos of all the different segments and different parts of the build. Most of the stuff on here I built myself. This was all done with a laser welder. You've seen the crazy stuff on YouTube and Facebook of the laser welding stuff it's real it works it's crazy I'm no welder period and it works really well it cuts good it cuts stainless titanium aluminum it welds aluminum it welds stainless steel 
and does a great job with the amateur. So stay tuned. We'll be firing this thing up shortly. <laughs>